Hey everyone, it's Miss Wagers back again, and we are going to be working on lesson four today. We are continuing to read Anatomy of a Volcanic Eruption. I hope you're really enjoying this informational text as it has a lot of cool facts in it about volcanoes. So let's go ahead and get started with our learning intention for today. So we are learning to use reading strategies so we can understand and summarize the text. Okay, good readers use um, strategies like summarizing so that way we can better our comprehension or our understanding of the text. So we know we are successful when we can explain the purpose of summarizing, identify key details to include in a summary, and then of course, summarize the text. That's the main skill we're going to work on today. So let's look at foundational skills. And today you have the Greek prefixes amphi and anti. And amphi means on both sides, and anti means against or opposite. So when we look at the words that you're going to see in your practice read today, you have the practice read fantastic frogs. You have amphibians, amphibious, antibacterial, antidote, antifreeze, and antiseptic. And when you're thinking about like amphibians, amphibians are animals that can live both on land and in water. So they can live kind of like on both sides or on both areas, right? So amphi. Think about that prefix today. And remember that prefixes come at the beginning of a word. They come at the beginning of a word. So we see amphi and anti at the beginning of all of those words. So you're going to make sure that you practice reading these words in this story to the best of your ability and try and make it nice and smooth. For vocabulary today, we have the word categorize. And you see these recycle bins here. Sometimes we have to categorize our recycling. That's a clue to you about what that word means. So it says three characteristics that are used to categorize volcanic eruptions. Um, they are the amount of material that is released during the eruption, the height of the eruption column, and how long the eruption lasts. There are four major types of volcanic eruptions. And then it goes on. We'll read more about that in the passage. So what do you think the word categorize means? Hmm. I like to categorize my pens by color. Categorize means to put someone or something into a group of similar people or things. So if you categorize your pens, you might do it by color, like I said. Or if you are categorizing your recycling, you're putting all your plastics in one bin, all your paper in another, and all your cans in another one. All right. So those are a couple of ways that you could categorize things. Maybe at school, you categorize your pencil box or your um, air, your cubby, like you put all your pencils in one area, your crayons in another area, your markers in another. So those are different ways that you could categorize, putting things that are similar together. We do have a poem today. So we are going to read this poem called Center of the Earth by Marilyn Singer. And I want you to pay attention to the language that evokes the volcano's extreme heat. So think about what language really shows you that a volcano is really hot. No matter how snowing the Wyoming plains, how icy the Iceland hills, how chilly the Atlantic waters, no matter how frigid the spot, it sits atop a bubbling cauldron of molten rock that finds a way to shoot up. St um, streams of glowing lava, jets of steamy water, fountains of sky-high fire burst of boiling mud, reminding us that the earth's deep pot is always cooking, always hot. Ooh. Think about that again. What showed that it was everything's hot? It starts by saying, no matter how snowy the Wyoming plains or how icy the Iceland hills, how chilly the Atlantic waters, no matter how frigid the spot, it sits atop a bubbling cauldron of molten rock. Molten means hot, melted. That finds a way to shoe up. Streams of glowing lava. So imagine it's glowing hot. Jets of steamy water. We know steam is hot. Fountains of sky high fire. Well, fire. That's hot. Um, burst of boiling mud. And again, boiling, we know that's hot. So imagine all these words are um, showing us in different ways. They're not just saying it's hot, it's hot, it's hot. All these different words that the author is using to show you exactly how, like all the heat that a volcano puts off. Reminding us that the earth's deep pot is always cooking, always hot. Awesome. That's kind of a fun poem. And remember, poetry is another way that you could describe a topic with and do it in a different way than like in an informational text. So we're going to continue reading volcanic eruptions. So it says three characteristics are used to, 
used to categorize volcanic eruptions. They are the amount of material that is released during the eruption, the height of the eruption column, and how long the eruption lasts. There are four major types of volcanic eruptions, Volcanian, Hawaiian, Strombolian, and Plinian. So now it's going to break it down into those four different types for us. That's awesome. See how they've organized this text for us? So here's the first volcano type, the Volcanian. Volcanian eruptions are named after a volcanic island in Italy called Volcano. These eruptions spew rock fragments, ash, and hot magma. Their eruption columns can reach as high as 12.5 miles, or 20 kilometers, into the sky. They are dramatic explosions with material being propelled at speeds of up to 1,150 feet, or 351 meters, per second. These eruptions often occur when a lava dome explodes or when magma forcefully pushes a plug out of a volcano's conduit. These eruptions are usually a series of brief pushes that can go on for pulses that can go on for days, months, or even years. Wow. So volcanic eruptions, they're really throwing things out and they can go on for a long time, even years, it says. Cool. Hawaiian. So we're going to move on to Hawaiian. It says Hawaiian eruptions are the smallest and calmest of all volcanic eruptions. They have an eruption column of about 1.2 miles or two kilometers or less. They have a quick moving lava quick moving lava flows and don't usually send out much ash. The most unique characteristic of a Hawaiian eruption is the lava fountain. Lava fountains spray liquid lava high into the air. And you can see a picture of that. Strombolian eruptions are small eruptions that occur at somewhat regular intervals over a period of time. They are named after a volcano in the Mediterranean on an island of Stromboli. The volcano that has been erupting about every 20 minutes for hundreds of years. Strombolian eruptions have an eruption column of about 6 miles or 10 kilometers or less in height. They are much noisier than Hawaiian eruptions and only occasionally pr produce lava flows. Awesome. And then we do have a fast fact over in the corner that we'll see. It says the word Vulcan is Latin and was named for the Roman god of fire. Plinian eruptions are named after the Roman soldier Pliny, Pliny the Elder. His nephew, Pliny the Younger, wrote an eyewitness account of the aftermath of the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in AD 79. Ever since then, eruptions similar to that of Vesuvius have been called Plinian eruptions. Plinian eruptions are the largest and most violent type of volcanic eruption. Their great columns of hot gas and ash can um, rise as high as 30 miles or 48 kilometers into the air. The largest of the eruptions are called ultra Plinian. These deadly er explosions look like giant mushroom clouds. Plinian eruptions often result in deadly pyroclastic flows and pumice bombs. Often the entire volcanic mountain is destroyed by the massive eruptions. And then it shows you in the caption, the eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980 was a Plinian eruption. And that was here in the United States. Under the sea. A Cirtsean eruption is a volcanic eruption that occurs underwater or very close to the surface of the water. They are similar to Strombolian eruptions, but are much more explosive. So it says an undersea volcano erupts off the coast of Tonga in the South Pacific Ocean. Let's continue, y'all. So we want to think, how are Plinian and Volcanian eruptions different? Hmm. So remember, it says the Volcanian eruptions are named after the volcanic island in Italy. Okay, so that's, they're named after different people or different things, right? Okay. It says um, these eruptions for, for Volcanian, they spew rock fragments, ash, and hot magma, and their eruption columns can reach as high as 12.5 miles. Well, how high can the eruption columns re reach in the Plinian ones? Hmm. Let me look back. It says their great column of hot gas and ash can rise as high as 30 miles. So we can say they're different because Plinian eruption columns are a lot bigger. They can go up to 30 miles, while Volcanians only go about 12 and a half miles in the air. Let's see, what's another way that they can be different? Um, the Plinian eruptions, it also says, are um, oftentimes deadly. And it usually destroys the entire um, volcano where... 
And the other one, Vulcanian ones, they can go on for days, weeks, months, even years. So they can keep going on and on. Where Plinian seems like it's just usually like more like one big um, explosion. The Volcanic Explosivity Index. Scientists have come up with a chart that helps them compare volcanic eruptions. They look at the characteristics such as severity of an eruption and the amount of material in an eruption cloud. They also look at the height of an eruption cloud, the duration of the eruption, and the other characteristics. Scientists then give an eruption a volcanic explosivity, explosivity index, or VEI number. This is similar to the number on the Richter scale that scientists use to describe the size of an earthquake. Check out some of the famous volcanic eruptions and their VEI numbers. So it says Kilauea in the United States um, from 1962 to 1982 when it erupted. So it erupted for 20 years. It has a VEI of zero. Whereas if we look down to Mount St. Helens, which was also in the United States in 1980, that had an eruption, um, a VEI of five. Well, also the um, eruption of Mount Vesuvius in Italy had a VEI of six. Materials of a volcanic eruption. So there's tephra, it says, tephra are rock fragments that erupt from a volcano. They vary in size. Larger pieces called blocks or bomb. Larger pieces are called blocks or bombs. They can weigh as much as 30 tons, 27 metric tons. Smaller pieces are called ash. Then we have the ash cloud is the next material of a volcanic eruption. So it says, the ash cloud of a volcano is made up of volcanic gases and tephra. When this material mixes with the water molecules in the atmosphere, acid rain can form. And right over here, um, a lahar is a volcanic met mud flow. It is formed when volcanic material mixes with ice or water in lakes and rivers near the volcano. Layars are heavy, um, heavy like wet concrete. They can also be very large. A lahar in Washington State near Mount Rainier was 460 feet deep. And then we have a pyroclastic flow is like a snow avalanche, except it's made of scorching hot tephra. So imagine instead of it being snow, it's scorching hot, Ooh. Um, hot tephra and toxic gases. This is by far the most dangerous and deadly part of a volcanic eruption. A pyroclastic flow can travel more than 60 miles per hour and cover everything in its path with a thick layer of sizzling debris. And then lastly, we have lava flows. Lava flows come in many different varieties. Scientists group them according to the type of magma the flow is made of. Scientists also consider how the lava is, um, how hot the lava is and how fast it travels. And later fourth graders, we will be learning more about um, volcanoes and lava in our science lessons. So let's think back to our reading strategy and we're thinking about summarizing. So summarizing a text can help readers with comprehension. When we summarize, we use our own words to express the most important details in the text. So when we're thinking about our first success criteria for our lesson and thinking about why do we summarize, this is the reason right here. This is what you need to know about summarizing. It can help you with your comprehension. When we summarize, we use our own words to express the most important details. So when you're putting things in your own words, that can help you have a better understanding. So why do readers summarize the text? Right, so we can put things in our own words so we have a better understanding. We're gonna look for details on page 20 to summarize volcanian eruptions. So we're going to use this little web to get um, summarize some of these details from the eruptions. So for example, it says it's named after the volcanic island in Italy, and then it spews rock fragments, ash, and hot magma. So I can put those two things on my list. So it's named after the volcano, and it shoots out the um, rock fragments, ash, and hot magma. I'm just putting these around on the web. Then I can also say how tall their eruption columns are, so 12.5 miles, and that they, um, expel things or they propel things in the air up to 1,150 feet. So the eruption columns reach 12 and a half miles or the materials speed reach up to 1,150 feet per second. And then I could keep going and I'm reading through these eruptions often occur when a lava dome explodes or when magma forcefully pushes a plug out of a volcano's conduit. These eruptions are usually a series of brief pulses that can go on for days, 
months, or even years. So then I'm going to continue putting this information in my chart. So the lava dome explosions can cause eruptions. The magma pushes out the plug and that can cause eruptions. Eruptions are usually a series of brief pulses. And then of course, as it said back in the text in that very last sentence, that they can go on for days, months, or even years. So I can put that in my chart as well. So these are all the characteristics or details that the author gives me about volcanian eruptions. Now, they used a whole paragraph plus to describe volcanian eruptions. I'm going to put these into my own words and describe this and summarize this in a much shorter amount. And that helps me to remember about volcanian eruptions because I can't memorize that whole paragraph, but I can memorize a couple sentences. So let's think. I could say that volcanian eruptions shoot out rock fragments, ash, and hot magma. Notice that I didn't say what they were named after. Probably not the most important detail for me to understand the characteristics of a volcanian eruption. I need to know what's coming out of it. And then I could add on and say that the eruption columns can reach 12 and a half miles high and materials can reach speeds of 1,100 feet, 150 feet. I could even be a little less um, specific and say and the materials um, shoot out very quickly. And then lastly, um, the eruptions can go on for days. I could add more detail and say, you know, they go could go on for months or even years. But again, if I'm at least saying that they can go on for days, I'm getting the idea in my head that these don't just like go off and be done. They can keep going and going and going. So notice how I'm putting all of this into my own words. I did take some words from the author. I'm not just completely making everything back up, but instead of rewriting this whole paragraph, I put it into three sentences with some of the most important details. So that is how we summarize a text. We wanna take those most important key details and put them together into just a few short sentences. So our learning intention today, remember we were use, learning to use our reading strategy so that we can summarize the text. Summarizing the text is really important to help us understand what we're reading. So that's the purpose of summarizing. So we can understand and have a better comprehension or understanding of what we're reading. Check. Identify the key details to include in a summary. Notice that when I did my summary, I didn't use every single detail that I put in my web. The author gave me a lot of details, but I can't remember all of them. So for example, I did not include the detail about how the volcanian um, eruption was named. That one was not a key, de key detail to include in my summary. So we ex identified those details. Check. And then of course, I had my three sentences that I used to summarize the text. I took some of the details and I put them together and I made them into my own sentences to put make that a little bit shorter so I don't have to reread the entire paragraph. I just had three short sentences to look back on to think about those characteristics or key details about a volcanian eruption. All right, so check. Now, your reading response. You're gonna summarize the ways that Hawaiian and Strombolian eruptions are different. So I want you to think about what is a Hawaiian eruption and what are the characteristics of a Strombolian eruption? And think about the ways that they are different. So you're going to want to answer in complete sentences. Make sure that you are using text evidence. The text evidence is included on your seesaw activity for you. So make sure you're looking back at the text and just do your best. Okay, guys, have a wonderful day. Do all of your work, be kind to one another, and I will see you guys later. Bye.